Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, as some of you know, I've just recently moved to a hot climate, and um, I'm just aware that I, uh, you may see me wearing the same, <laughs> the same tops because I, I, I haven't got as many. Well, I, never, I didn't need as many um, summery tops in England. So yeah, I'm just just explaining my wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> at the start of this this video today and the topic today um as you may have seen in my facebook post is all about the mascot or the hero child um and i put a picture on on facebook of this little vulnerable baby or toddler looking at itself in the mirror and the reflection back was the baby the toddler in a hero's a, a superhero outfit um and this is exactly um what this role is all about you know the child um learns that or believes comes to believe that it has these incredible powers to hold the whole family together that's the role of the superhero child the mascot and and you know that that word hero what is a hero well a hero is someone with extraordinary powers. Um, when a disaster hits, the hero steps in from the wings and makes everything better, you know, jumps in and rescues. But then once the disaster is averted and everyone's calmed and it's all hunky-dory, the hero, there's no longer a need for them, so they exit. So they only come in when needed in times of great stress in times of great discomfort this is the role of the hero child they are the responder they're on the alert uh, they're listening out they're ready to go should the need arise uh, for them to step in and either distract family members from a conflict i don't know by cracking a joke or trying to intervene, even speaking to one of the parents, trying to soothe them or suggest ways of coping, uh, trying to help, you know, stepping in immediately and taking over or assisting a parent. Uh, they may also be very aware of the, uh, the parent's both parents may lack of parenting in a role and they may feel that it's their role to step in so for example i'm thinking of a, a child with a younger sibling the fathers may not be giving much attention to the son and the older sibling steps in and tries to take on a bit more of a fatherly role uh, with the child uh, they may also find themselves in a bit of a sort of substitute spouse role with with one of the parents uh, if the relationship is is lacking emotionally uh, sometimes also um, if there's no physical intimacy a parent might turn to the child that's uh, most most adult uh, which is often uh, how the hero child is seen um so this this role really as you can hear requires them to be the strong one who has it all together. They're not the needy one. They don't ask for help because, you know, superheroes don't ask for help. Uh, they rescue. They are the helpers. Um, they're the responders to family issues. And like I said, they're always on, they're always trying to put out fires on full alert. And the thing is, narcissistic parents will praise the hero child for these very aspects and saying, gosh, you know, this child, she's, she's just, you know, so mature beyond her years. She's you know, 10 going on 30. Um, and also, you know, saying, gosh, you know, they don't, she, she never really needs much. She's very self-reliant and um, very able, very able child. Um, you know, just so easy to, to raise. I bet because you didn't have to do anything much. Uh, you weren't raising them. <laughs> they were raising themselves. This is the thing. In fact, they were almost stepping in as more of a parent role for the parents a lot of the time. Uh, but the key thing is here, you know, these children, 
that there's no room for them to be needy. There's no room for them to be vulnerable um, or to express any emotions. Once again, in the narcissistic family system, <coughs> this child, <coughs> excuse me, has to suppress its own emotions in order to manage the emotions of the family. <coughs> So all in all, the hero child, the mascot, they learn to be what others need. And therefore, you know, they become prone in adult life to doing exactly the same, believing exactly the same and becoming codependent. The hero child's innate belief that it's their role to respond to the distress of others, to step in and fix and rescue and soothe in any situation does give them both a blessing and a curse. On the one hand, it's a blessing because they're able to cope with enormous stress. They just are. They're kind of, they're, they're groomed to cope in high stress situations. Um, but, you know, this still takes its toll over the years because all that stress, all that sort of cutting off from the self in order to be what others need, it can only lead to burnout, exhaustion, depression, because you're suppressing everything, anxiety, you know, because a child doesn't actually have the coping skills uh, to, to manage adult situations. So there's anxiety from day one, imposter syndrome, uh, all the other kind of CPTSD uh, symptoms will begin to show at some point. Um, on the other hand, so on one hand, they are able to cope with tremendous stress at a cost, though. On the other hand, the hero doesn't believe that anyone can help them. And they're very, uh, they find it very hard to reach out for help. Um, and in some ways, there's a little bit of a grandiosity in this. Uh, which is totally understandable. I mean, the child has to have a bit of a grandiose view of themselves at a young age in order to grapple with this role. Uh, they believe often that their way is the best way, even above other learned people or suggested guidelines. Uh, they believe that they're always right, and they can be quite um, stubborn about all of this. Um, they can really, really struggle to show vulnerability and feelings with others, uh, believing that it's, well, in fact, for them, it's safer to be the listener than to be the speaker or the sharer. Uh, so you'll often find them quite difficult to get anything out of the hero child. They'd, they'd rather be listening to your struggles so that they can step in and offer advice or take um help you take control over a situation um and this drive to fix is is pretty strong it's and it's unconscious drive really um and it can be frustrating for the hero child when all their efforts don't work they're like you know when they can't think of a solution they'll try and try and try uh when really sometimes it's it's not their place to be doing so so what's the solution or remedy here? Well, I mean, of course, it's, I can just say, well, just stop it. You know, just stop, stop trying to fix others. <laughs> um, and that's the truth, really. Stop, time to take off your cape and, 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 you know, perhaps allow yourself to be vulnerable, be the little baby on the side of the mirror without the cape. Uh, and see that true vulnerable inner child uh, that never had a hero itself and always wanted one, always wanted someone to step in and rescue, rescue it. Um, so that's some of the work we will do. We will take that journey. We'll take the hero's journey within you uh, so that you can be that hero parent for that abandoned little child who was only who only knew what it was like to be seen when it was being what other people needed it to be. It was only loved, only noticed when it was of 
um, value by being what others wanted. Um, another key aspect is also, you know, to step back and just allow others to feel uncomfortable, to feel, you know, for, for conflict to arise and not to do anything, um, to allow others to be responsible for their feelings and actions um, and instead looking of looking out there to control things, rather going within and taking responsibility for your own um, unmet needs. Um, so that little child looking in the mirror, they, they really need you to allow them to take off the cape. And that's something you can do really in a wonderful way with a therapist. It's probably the safest way available to you actually. Um, especially when the, there's trust issues. Um, so if you were in this role, you know, and you may have had a couple of these roles intermixed within the narcissistic family, um, you know, if you resonate with this, then, you know, do you find yourself a good therapist? Um, and you know where I'm going with this, but, um, you know, any any therapist who who gets it will be of such, um, such blessing to you um, because you do need support. We all do. Um, and if you'd like to work with me, um, you fancy making that hero's journey within, well, you know what to do. I'm going to leave my um, Calendly link at the bottom here. And uh, also, please, if you're watching this on YouTube, do subscribe, like and share this video uh, if it's been of any help to you today. Um, and thank you for watching. You know, do comment if, if you have any experience in this yourself. Uh, take care, everyone, and have a lovely Friday.